Welcome to Tech Brothers with Damir. In this video, we are going to learn how to load text or CSV files with same or less columns than destination table by using a skip task in SSIS package. So let me show you the sample files we are using here. There are three files sitting here. One is customer.txt. There are other ones, Tech Brother IT and Tech Brother IT1. Now, if I will open this file, what I see here, I have date of birth and ID. There are two columns in this file. And if I will open the second file, I have ID, name and date of birth. You notice that the name of the columns are the same. Even some of them are missing. That's fine. Let's go to the last one. And we have name and date of birth. The order can be also different. It doesn't really matter. So as long as we have all those columns in the table, and here is my table definition. I have create table DBO customer, ID integer, name worker, and date of birth. And in these files, you notice that these are the uh, columns available. Even uh, one column is missing, doesn't really matter. So we have a date of birth ID, but name is missing here. In the other one, we have same. And uh, let's uh, create another file here quickly. And we are gonna call this one, doesn't really matter. <laughs> we are gonna leave this one new text file, fine. And I am going to have only name. I will say, uh, this is a test name only file. So there is only one column. Now we are going to go ahead and create this uh, SSIS package that should read this information and put that information into the table. Right here, what uh, we need, uh, we need a few of the information. What I would like to create, uh, here is our source folder, fine. Once the files are loaded, I would like to move them to the archive folder with the date timer. So I'm going to remove the elder, older files here. So files will be moved to the archive. And uh, then uh, if uh, in case the uh, error happen, uh, we would like to create error log file in the log folder. And uh, the table you guys already know in the tech brothers IT database on this uh, SQL server instance. Uh, fine. Now we are all set up for our SSIS package. Open SSDT and go to SSIS packages, right click new SSIS package. And let's call this one uh, load multiple text files with less or same columns create these variables so we can change the paths and the change the table names and anything by using the configuration i'm going to call this one source folder okay i will change the data type and everything at the end i'm going to call this one log folder the other one i will be creating archive folder then we need as we can change our mind and say, okay, my file will be coming uh, not dot txt, it can be coming dot csv. So file extension variable will take care of that. And we have a file delimiter. So, okay, no, I don't want the delimiter comma, I want the pipe. So that can also be handled. We don't have to make changes to the package. We will change just the configuration and values for these uh, variables. Um, and finally, we have a destination table. That's where we would like to load the data. All good. These should be all string. So we are going to set this, them to string. And now let's uh, go ahead and provide the value. Destination table. I'm going to go ahead and say DBO dot customer. You see that I am including parentheses uh, around it. Uh, Sometimes table has a space or hyphen in them. It's a good idea to have. Uh, parentheses around your schema and table name file delimiter in my case is comma for now and uh, later uh, maybe we'll have pipe and all that and here is file extension um, so in this uh, uh, is dot txt read only dot txt files uh, and here uh, we have a uh, archive folder let's copy the log folder path uh, and then we can change to the so right here log delete the log part and we have a archive folder and I'm going to paste the same thing and here is source folder the variables are created and now we will be creating a, a adio.net connection so we can use that to load the data to the SQL server table that's where it is going to point to our database where our DBO customer table does exist. So I'm uh, selecting the SQL Server instance name from here and then I have to provide uh, the database name, uh, Tech Brothers IT database name. Hit OK, hit OK, 
hit okay let's go ahead and rename as we are going to create the configuration it should be some good name so we have a db connection or tech brothers that really tells us okay this is a db connection database connection and the name of database is the tech brothers it all great and now we will be bringing a script task fine double double click script task i'm using c sharp you can use a visual basic if you like uh, the code I'm going to provide uh, is written in C sharp. Uh, there are converters online. You can use them and convert uh, the code from C sharp to the VB if you like. Uh, here, uh, select the user variables and all of them. And I believe we are good. Yep, that's all we had it here. Edit script. Uh, it's going to open the uh, script task editor while it is opening now we are going to go to the tech brothers it website and copy some script i already have written the script there so once you are at techbrothersit.com you will be going to the ssis video tutorial and you go further down is the script task once you see the script task you go further down and you will see dynamic text and csv file with script task you're going to click on the second uh, post how to load text or CSV file with same or less uh, columns than a destination table by using script task as you can see that I have the post written if you can't watch the videos you can uh, read through the post and create the same package uh, I am going to put the script uh, uh, link in the de description of the video once the video is uploaded so you don't have to come all the way and find this post you can go to video description and just to take from there here there are a couple of namespaces that we need to add so I am copying those namespaces I will go to namespaces region here and paste system.io as we are reading the files so we'll use a different method and instances from this namespace as we are writing the data to the SQL I'm going to use some methods and instances from system.data.sql um, client namespace let's come down here we have public void main that's our main function I'm gonna delete this uh, uh, DTS success we will have uh, that already in the code included uh, so we don't need that uh, I'm going to copy the entire code copy come back to editor and paste right here okay now we come back uh, and uh, read through the line of code and see what exactly this code is doing uh, few suggestions here I will save uh, my code here and build uh, that will uh, help me to debug if there is any syntax error or, or uh, um, any namespace or anything is missing it will tell me uh, from uh, from the build it looks good so we can go ahead and uh, start reading our script I'm declaring a variable of string type called date time and then I'm saving uh, the date time part to it so year month date uh, hours um, uh, minutes and seconds this uh, date time uh, part will be used in the log file so if you are running your package multiple time you will know that what time it ran and what log file it did created now we are using try catch block so in the try we are going to try to read the files and load if in case the error happen we will be going to the catch block now I declared some variables here and use the SSIS variables to pass the values to these variables why I'm doing it because I don't want to use the entire thing like DTS dot variables and the uh, user and the whole thing uh, everywhere in my code so that's why I'm using uh, these variables uh, and pass just uh, setting the values of these variables from the SSIS uh, variables uh, make sure uh, your SSIS variables uh, uh, what we're using here they should have the exact name uh, what we have created uh, right here so they they're case sensitive if you make a mistake uh, you have to struggle for a while to make the corrections uh, I did uh, in one of the video it took us like four or five minutes to debug uh, source folder find a file extension file delimiter destination table archive folder looks good to me now if we error happen we can uh, uh, further take a look and see what exactly is error now I'm reading all the files uh, but here is the catch uh, I'm you know, reading uh, asterisk dot extension so what that what does that mean uh, that means uh, the file name can be anything in our case uh, if you see here the fi file name is a uh, tech brother or customer doesn't really matter but I want to only read a dot txt files uh, so I'm gonna create another one uh, just the Excel file our package should be smart enough to read only the dot txt file it should ignore this dot uh, file okay 
tomorrow if you will change your variable value here file extension dot csv it will start reading dot csv files and ignore even dot text files or whatever other extensions are now we go back to text uh, editor this part can be put on the top we don't have to put here i'm gonna cu cut this pause and put it right here before even a that's uh, where we are telling okay we need the connection manager uh, bsn sql connection my idio connection is equal to new connection we create a new instance and that should be equal to the db connection uh, so in our case uh, remember i have to rename that uh, data uh, adio.net connection uh, so that's going to be db connection uh, tech brothers it in your case whatever the name you have uh, you might have a customer or underscore sale whatever the connection manager you have created you will provide it right here now once we loop through the files we have list of the files and we need to loop the very first thing we are doing saying declaring a variable called counter and then we are declaring another variable of string type called line another one column list and setting the value to the blank now here I'm saying okay system.io uses the stream reader and that's equal to source file and uh, point to the file name so that's the variables remember here we have a list of the files it is going to get us one file at a time so once we get the first file it is going to read use the while loop and read the entire file and in by using the while loop till end of a line so if you have a hundred line it is going to loop through hundred time and till the there is a last line is a null that means that okay there is no more lines to read so then it will be out while will be uh, false at that time and uh, it will come out of the loop as uh, we are in the loop uh, and counter is equal to zero what we are doing here when we counter zero that means this is the first uh, row it is the uh, first row or first uh, line or uh, first record it is reading uh, in our case it is he header row so i'm saying column list uh, make the column list from that uh, uh, header list uh, and the file delimiter is whatever the comma uh, it or pipe it whatever it is uh, and uh, replace that with the parentheses around it and commas uh. so we are building a list of the column that we can use for our insert query now here as uh, when it counter is equal to zero this part will be done um, next uh, when the next counter is not going to be zero it means it is reading actual record uh, so it will come to else part uh, and that's where we are going to use uh, this uh, insert query so we're saying insert into table name column list that we have already built uh, so the same way you build uh, write your uh, SQL statement uh, insert into let me show you actually if you right click on the customer table and uh, go here script as uh, and say insert into and this is what you have right you have a uh, insert into table name then you have columns uh, this is the column list we build uh, okay now the next part this values part uh, is going to be built on each of the iteration uh, so here see when every time it is going to loop a new row will be read and this is where those values will be made from that line so line has maybe um, um, whatever the data is there it is going to replace that uh, with the comma and uh, col uh, quotes around it if you want to see your query fine we can take a look on query so if it is a pipe then pipe will be a replaced with the comma and then a single quotes around it so I, i'm going to use this uh, message box to show you but once you're done you can put the comments back and uh, that's it now once uh, this insert query is ready we are going to run this insert query and it will insert the data into the table counter will uh, keep uh, moving forward if there are records uh, till uh, we are done with the in reading the entire file now once we are done with the reading the file we will close this uh, connection and say okay we need to move this file so i'll move to the archive backslash and the file name and add the date time to it uh, and extension i have replaced the, the source folder and uh, file extension in the first uh, because i don't need uh, that folder path uh, now and the success uh, once uh, you are done successfully otherwise exception is there okay so error happen l use the log folder and then uh, just create a file called error log underscore date time dot log this is a, a lot of talk uh, i understand that now just a summary declaring variables okay using the connection manager getting all the list of the file looping through the files here 
here loop into the records and building and insert queries first we are checking building the list for the header so column list for the header otherwise we are creating insert query by using that value and finally inserting and archiving our file all great now we cancel this out I'm gonna go and show you there are no records in this table the view customer and then we'll run our query sorry package here, come back here hit okay and we are reading dot text files with a comma and that's what we have in our source folder how about that if I will just copy and make a backup of these files because we will be moving and playing with them go to videos paste it right here just in case we need to copy back source folder now we go to archive there should not be anything in the archive they are empty and the log is also empty you can see that uh, click here run your package see this is how the insert statement will be uh, prepared so insert into dbo customer dbo date of birth id and then we are getting the values fine fine all completed successfully let's go back to the table and here we can see that wherever uh, if you remember that uh, we had uh, one file that had uh, there was no name so it uh, used the ID and date of birth that was present and uh, then we had uh, uh, only uh, name file uh, there was only uh, name was there and there was no ID and uh, uh, date of birth then uh, one of them has these values and second one and third one so you see that uh, our package is uh, dynamic it can take uh, the values uh, from different column doesn't matter the order it doesn't matter um, if the column is missing uh, as long as uh, that column has the exact uh, match with our uh, table so it can be less or it can be same uh, the package is going to work great but you do not want to put extra columns so if you will try to put the extra columns in this this type of files it's going to throw you error so we will have that scenario i will build it there are tons of scenario we need to build um, like where we need to verify if it exact match with our column header of the files okay we load it otherwise we will ignore it i will create that package but this is one of the package uh, scenarios there and people are looking for and uh, i have a lot of requests coming from the people okay create this something where order does change or one column is not provided and all that what i do so here this can be done now let's experiment a little more and play with it so i'm going to have this uh, uh, log file see here text file is uh, sorry excel file is still sitting there it does not care about it now let me copy this one and it has uh, only let's copy this one actually so copy and put it into the source folder instead of uh, let's bring one more actually I want to create some CSV files from here copy paste now for one of them uh, let's say dot txt i just want to go ahead and say oh, now, from now on uh, you need to read uh, csv files uh, don't read text files uh, i don't want to read the text files uh, so you see there in the text file we have a test uh, name only file that should not be loaded uh, and this is what we should be loaded we go back here truncate our table and now uh, we are going to select the query fine there is no records uh, run the package it should load only one file and this file should be archived as well so you see <laughs> oh my goodness i did not change the extension here so it read the dot txt file fine that's fine no big deal so that also is one of the test whatever the extension you have it is going to read so remember we have uh, have not changed uh, the extension so we have to come back here and say okay read the csv file not uh, don't read uh, text files anymore so even you go ahead and put a, a text file there it's not gonna read now why I do these experiments with you guys because I can show you the capabilities of this package and then with the small changes of what you can achieve so here that CSV that's what we have if I run this package now let me truncate the table okay and run the package now it should only load the CSV file and uh, this is what it is fine loaded successfully let's go to the archive folder that CSV is moved from a source to the archive and uh, we can see right here 
this one right here yep so this is how it is uh, going to work now th there are further to it it's not like okay this is all you can do if uh, the last scenario I'm gonna do with you guys I'm gonna copy this whole thing uh, paper it here in the script paste it here and uh, replace file destination yes okay now we have text file here and uh, we can change uh, somebody said no I want to have pipe delimited file and there will be text files and that's what I want to load so in your case you're fine you just uh, have let them put the pipe delimited file whatever the extension they like it dot text or dot csv no big deal come to your package and say okay now it is pipe see just one change you will be making this change by using the configuration and uh, you don't have to even open your package come back let's truncate the data okay no more data is there run the package this is a really awesome um, package I, I really like this uh, package okay this, remember see we have done okay I want to read uh, um, the da data that has uh, the file that has the uh, pipe delimited what we said okay read me the CSV so there is no CSV in this folder if you can see that is text so that's what we want to do we want to go back and say no I want to read the, the pipe the limited files and uh, that has the extension txt fine run it now it should read see it read the records close it go back to the SQL run it and you see two records are inserted so here see that <laughs> the uh, test name only that didn't that there was only one uh, column so that is also that will be also loaded so it is not really defined as a pipe or comma because there is only one column and we want to consider that if that's a scenario we want to load it if you don't want to load it then there would be a small changes we have to make in our code to ignore any file that does not have pipe so you can understand from here with the small small changes you can create tons of scenarios and that's not hard you can handle that i will see you guys in the next video i will put the link in the description for the code and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something out of it. And uh, uh, see you in next video then. Bye.